Okay, well, good uh, good evening, everybody. Um, we've got a few families who've joined us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start our webinar, obviously, just a couple of minutes late. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, hopefully, there'll be a, a few more families join us as we go through, through the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, my name is Neil Beach. I'm the principal here at Gainesville High School. Um, just some quick introductions of uh, who else is in the room with us and uh, the plan for this evening, and then we'll get right into the the uh, the information that we have. So, um, Mrs. Pomfret, our director of school counseling, is here. Uh, Mrs. Yearwood, our assistant principal, is here. Mr. Washington, assistant principal. Mr. Barton, assistant principal. Uh, Dr. Scott, who's our uh, pathways program coordinator and Mr. Daniels, who's our administrative intern. So that's who's in the room. Um, we've got a little bit of information that we're gonna share that, that we're describing ultimately as a, an update. Um, Mr. Mr. Beach, Ms. Manivole is with us as well. She's just not on my screen. Oh, sorry. Ms. Manivole is here, thank you. Um, also one of our assistant principals. Um, sorry, Mrs. Manivole. So our intent was to have four of these webinars during the course of the year, one per grading period, to take a look back at some of the things that have occurred during the school year and then foreshadow take a look forwards at some things that uh, we have planned or are around the corner um, so we are going to record this we'll also drop the powerpoint onto our website so if, uh, if families want to see this uh, information but we're unable to attend tonight then obviously there'll be a, another opportunity down the line so without any further ado, we'll, we'll start with the agenda for this evening. So introductions, we've, we've done that bit. Uh, the agenda is uh, just a, a looking at the look back and then towards the, the wrap up of events from the fall. Uh, we've got the, uh, the end of the first marking period coming up with a little bit of information about that, some upcoming events that uh, may be worth circling on the calendar. And then uh, there is a Q&A feature in Zoom. Uh, if you look at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you can click on the Q&A. If you have specific questions, uh, the team members and, and I will do the best we can to keep up with, uh, with any typed questions that we have as, as we go through the information this evening. So wrapping up, um, enrollment for a, a high school principal in, in Prince William County is a big deal because our budget is realized at the end of September based on student enrollment. Uh, today we have 1,995 students, uh, a large 10th, 9th and 10th grade class, over 600 students in the 9th and 10th grade classes, uh, close to 450 students in our 11th grade class and about 235 students in our senior class. So we are gonna continue through a growth cycle. We'll grow by probably 400 students going into next year. We'll get up to close to 2,400. And then in our uh, fourth year of operation, we'll probably land right around 2,500 students. And we're hoping that we plateau there as far as enrollment is concerned. Um, what I will say, however, is our senior class is about to graduate in June. And uh, as soon as we have a graduation date set and we're able to publish that, we'll push that out. Um, we have been sharing with students in our senior class uh, the Justin's website. Justin's is the uh, supplier of all things graduation, so caps and gowns, invitations, those things. Um, we've encouraged our students and parents of seniors not to wait to make sure that they go ahead and order their cap and gown, students cap and gown for the, uh, the June graduation, so there's no hiccup further down the line. Taking a, a quick look back, we had touch base conferences on October 10th. Thank, thanks for everybody who, uh, who participated and, and made that work. I believe was a, a successful event, a good opportunity to, um, to connect and, and gain some feedback. We had homecoming uh, last week. It was a busy week for us, but a really positive, fun week for everyone at the school. And then we have some survey data. We, uh, we administered across the school system a, a student health and wellness survey. Um, our students re reported positively, Mrs. Pomfret. I would say that the student data that came back was, was more positive than last year in some regards uh, regarding their desire to see old friends, um, looking forward to making new friends and uh, obviously looking forward to learning new things. So some positive data as far as the survey that went out earlier in the school year. 
So we've had a lot, a lot going on. Our senior class had a, a senior sunrise early in the, the school year. They uh, met probably close to half of our senior class met out in the amphitheater uh, an hour or so before the school day began to, to watch the sunrise over the stadium. Uh, you can see the senior class portrait with, uh, with our mascot in the top left corner. We had a, a fall festival for all of our new students on the, the turf practice field. Those students then could do a, a color run type of event and attend the football game. Our marching band numbers have grown and the performance has improved um, significantly this, this year. So in competition, our marching band, uh, I believe most recently finished fifth out of 17 or 19 schools um, with some first place finishes in, in categories within the competition. So I know they've been working hard and, and obviously performing well. And our faculty and staff uh, joined in the homecoming Spirit Week events and, and uh, tie-dyed their own shirts. We wore those for the, the last day of the Spirit Week. So that, that's the faculty and staff picture you can see. Homecoming last week, we had uh, over 1,200 students, I think it was in the end of the, the homecoming dance on Saturday night. Um, Big turnout for the, the football game, um, the halftime homecoming court celebration, and uh, obviously a large dance performance from our dance team and some local students and, and, and our cheerleaders. Um, so thank you to all of our parents who contributed as chaperones or volunteers. Um, I wanna say thanks to our students who um, entered into the spirit of homecoming week really positively. It was a fun week and uh, we, we still had a strong focus on teaching and learning. So thanks to our students for making it a fun week, but uh, at the same time being appropriate and um, remaining studious as, uh, as we had fun during the week. Okay, one of the things that may be on the horizon, hopefully not too soon, is um, the potential for inclement weather. As was the case last year, um, we, we have the potential for a code orange day. Code orange is relatively new to Prince William County Schools. What in essence it means is that the school building will be closed, students will not report to school, um, but that our faculty and staff will be available for office hours. We're gonna push this out on our website. Uh, we'll, we'll put this information in a, an upcoming newsletter, but similar to last year, one hour blocks by a cluster of departments, students can log into a, a Zoom link with their teacher. The Zoom link will be on the teacher's Canvas page if they need help. Otherwise, the work that students would engage that day is really wrapping up any outstanding assignments that students have, and they can use the office house for extra help if they need it. So more, more to come in terms of pushing that out formally, but just trying to get ahead in terms of the code orange dynamic uh, that may crop up in the, in the future. Okay, I'm gonna pass over to Mrs. Pomfret regarding the end of the first grading period. Yeah, it's kind of hard to believe that it's already here. Um, the end of the marking period is next Friday, October 28th. Um, so we really encourage our families to be looking at parent view, um, not just on the app, but also on the computer as well. Teachers can put more information um, in their teacher view accounts, their side of parent view. Um, that's not accessible in the app. So really encourage you to get on the web-based version to look at the feedback that teachers are putting in there. You might, you might be able to get a more holistic view of what's happening in your students' classes. Um, what is in parent view is the most recent grade. So you're probably getting notifications from Canva, uh, Canvas, excuse me, that grades are being posted. Um, but that means it's just work they're collecting through Canvas. What's in parent view is the grade. Um, other tools for our families to be considering um, thinking about is our ticket spigot. This is the, the way that Prince William County will be selling um, uh, tickets from now on. We used it for homecoming with success. So just I would encourage you guys to get an app um, and have your students to have an app for that as well. It's a very easy way um, to, and it's, as a parent, it's easy to transfer tickets to your students if you purchase it. Um, and then another um, resource, kind of back to grades, not just with tickets, is the paper online tutorial. And I'm going to go over to the next slide. Um, paper is a very good and very free online tutorial for really any subject area. Um, and students can get live help um, really with anything that they need help with. So they would submit questions through paper um, and get 
really live support um, from a teacher. If someone's not available, they'll get a message when when that someone pers a person is available to help them. Um, my understanding is the teachers, uh, the people, the tutors and in, in paper are actually teachers. Um, so this is a really great resource and we strongly encourage our families to utilize this as well as resources like Khan Academy too. And all this, all of this information is on the Prince William County website. Um, on October, October 12th, we did um, conduct the PSAT for our ninth, 10th and 11th graders. Our seniors went on their senior trip. Um, the ninth graders took a digital version. This is new with the college board. They started doing it for AP tests. Um, they're transitioning their other suite of tests to this as well. So our ninth graders um, took this online. Our 10th and 11th graders took the paper pencil copy. I anticipate probably in the future, we're going to be doing a lot more of the online testing. The score reports for our students, and this information was included in the Cardinal Connection this past week. Um, we anticipate getting score reports sent out in early December. These are typically sent through the student's College Board account. So if your student doesn't have a College Board account yet, I encourage you to get them one. Um, probably good to not to use an email outside of their Prince William County email address because the College Board account will travel with them through PSAT, SAT, and AP. Um, and once they graduate, their Prince William County email address goes away. So think about a good, appropriate email address that they can use like on their college applications um, that you want to start now. And then that can be their account um, for the College Board. Especially for my ninth and 10th grade families, I really encourage you to focus on skills and not scores. These are practice. They're practice SATs. Um, 11th graders, the, S the PSAT does include the National Merit Scholarship qualifying test as well. So depending on how a student scores, they may become eligible um, with their PSAT 11 scores. But please know that's exceptionally competitive. Um, but that is an option. We really want our 11th graders zooming in paying attention. It's great practice for the SATs, um, but they may also become eligible for scholarships. I cannot stress enough to, you, to our families, using Khan Academy for SAT preparation is really the best resource you can you have out there. There are a lot of companies that you can utilize um, in the community, but really with Khan Academy, you're, you're getting personalized. They take the PSAT scores and focus in on the skills that your student needs um, to kind of bulk up on a little bit. So really, I encourage you to use Khan Academy. Um, and then for our 11th graders, you've got your PSAT done now in the fall. Love for you to take the PS, uh, the SAT, excuse me, in the spring, and then one either in the summer or in the fall of their senior year. Two, maybe three times. At some point, you have diminishing returns with your scores, um, but that's kind of the metric that we recommend. I am going to hand it over now to Mr. Daniels to talk to us a little bit about attendance. Hi, good evening. Um, uh, so I just wanted to talk a couple things about attendance on this. First, everybody's done a really good job uh, so far. Um, doing this process helps us streamline uh, what kind of our process is inside the building. So we're going to encourage you for excused absences to continue to use Parent View. Um, make sure you're reporting the all day absence in Parent View. Um, and it gives you the ability to kind of then give us what the reasoning is. Um, and then if you're going to have an early dismissal, use the link that's provided in, under the Gainesville website under the ribbon up top. There's an attendance button, click on that and you'll see uh, an attendance button, click on, you'll get the link to the um, early dismissal form, fill that out as best you can. That way we can have an early dismissal pass ready for your student. Um, so you don't have to come to the building and waste time waiting for them. Um, we can have given them the pass. So that way if you show up at 11 o'clock uh, and they can be ready by 11 o'clock and they can be heading on down. Um, so you can not be late for the appointment uh, or wherever you're going. And then for late arrivals, if you're coming into school late, all students need to check in at the front desk. Um, bring all students. If you're arriving after 730, uh, no matter what the case is, please stop in at door one. Um, you're signing in at the Raptor desk, uh, at the front desk, and then you'll they'll enter their student name in, um, and that will then populate a, a pass for them at that time. Um, if you're showing up late, can you make sure that uh, you also are bringing a note in um, so that way we can excuse it right away. So if you're showing up after uh, the start of the day at 8, 8.30 and it's because of a doctor's appointment or whatever, bring in a note. That way we can excuse that 
uh, right away and, uh, and makes our lives a little bit easier in trying to play catch up. So. Hi, good evening, folks. My name is Robert Scott. I'm the uh, specialty program coordinator. Uh, before I get into the pathways program, I do want to echo one thing that Ms. Pomfret said. I work every day with seniors who are applying to college right now who wish that they had better SAT scores. Um, if you are an 11th grader, even a 10th grader who just took the PSAT, the Khan Academy, the Khan Academy review is without question the the most valuable review please don't wait until september or october of your senior year to log into khan academy and see the review that you had at your fingertips after the psat if you're an 11th grader log into khan and you you plan to take the sats in in may of 11th grade log into khan academy in february do just a couple of questions a day over the course of the spring, the Khan Academy review of your PSAT scores is, is um, arguably the most helpful thing that we, the resource that we have. As far as Pathways program, we're excited. We had some time this summer and this fall to, to kind of put some meat on the bones of this, of this program. And it is just as exciting as we hoped it would be when we kind of envisioned this in the beginning. Um, we will, this year, we're going to have about 40 students who finish extended learning experiences. And it's in a variety of areas, um, physical fitness, nutrition, the arts, science, uh, research, academics, foreign language. So we're collecting an, uh, a nice group of sort of extended learning templates to share with ninth and rising uh, ninth and 10th or 10th and 11th graders. Um, if you are an 11th grader, and even though you're not in the group that we had originally targeted for completing a pathway, a lot of 11th graders came to us with enough courses in their transcript to complete a pathway. If you're an 11th grader and you're wondering if you, you can complete a pathway, even a pathway with distinction where you would complete one of our extended learning experiences, come and see me. Um, I encourage students to see me prior to February so we can make some decisions about your scheduling and then communicate with your counselor to make sure that everything is set for you to be a pathways completer next year. Current 10th graders, a member of our Pathways Steering Committee will be coming to your level two classes between now and February 1st when we begin, basically when we begin the registration process. We wanna to talk to 10th graders about targeting 10th graders specifically with the Pathways program so that you know if you're in a level two class in ninth or 10th grade, there's a chance that's a pathway you can finish. And if you complete the required uh, community service hours or leadership training, plus an extended learning experience, you can graduate with honors. You can graduate with distinction in your pathway. So a member of our steering committee is gonna come around to meet with you in 10th grade. If you're in the ninth grade right now, I don't want you to worry too much about pathways. Get involved, stay active. Your, your school counselor will meet with you in February about electives that can either get you on or keep you on a pathway that will set you up for um, completion. If you have more questions about the Pathways program, please come join us. Uh, November 17th is our first Pathways information night. We'll start at seven in the auditorium. And while predominantly that program is geared towards um, rising ninth grade students, there's a lot of helpful information we'll share that night. We have a number of students coming to share some information, other teachers and program coordinators who will be there to share information. Uh, seven o'clock Thursday night, November 17th if you have questions about our pathways program or, or you can contact me anytime okay a quick uh, athletics update um a reminder that uh the winter season tryouts begin november 7th and uh, right now student athletes who wish to participate in winter sports can go through the, the, the registration process for concussion training, physicals, et cetera, in preparation for that season if they don't have that information on file from the fall season. Um, the GainesvilleCardinals.com webpage is, uh, is where our students and parents should go for, for that information. Um, that same website also has contact information for our clubs and sponsors, sorry, our coaches and sponsors for clubs and athletics. Um, so please go to that website if you, if you need more information. 
uh, parents in the room, uh, our booster organization has uh, has changed leadership a little bit over the last few days, and uh, the the new booster uh, members of the board are looking for for essentially additional parents to help with um, standing up the booster organization right in in tasks ranging from being uh, lead members on the board all the way through to supporting the concessions um, efforts that we have for our, our various sports uh, inside and outside the building. One of the, the things I'll stress to our parents is to, to be involved in the Activity Booster Club, um, supports both athletics and activities, um, but it really benefits all of our students. Um, any money that I don't have to divert from our allocation to support activities and athletics is money that we can keep in, acad in academics. So really the, the effort that um, all of our parents have made in, in the realm of our activity booster organization is much appreciated and, and ultimately benefiting all of our students. So thanks for, for being involved if you've been involved and, and thanks for considering getting involved if you haven't at this time. There'll be an interest meeting and a membership meeting uh, announced in the near future and uh, all, all parents and uh, ultimately community members therefore are welcome. Good evening, uh, Mr. Washington is going to talk about oh. pictures. Sorry, Mr. Washington. That's all good. It's all good. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a couple of reminders. We're down to our last two picture sessions of the year. And I want to stress this will be the last opportunity for both underclassmen and seniors. Our underclassmen makeup picture day will be on November 17th uh, from 7.45 a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. As we get closer to that date, about two weeks out, some information will come out in terms of an online link where students and parents can order pictures for themselves. We also have hard copy packets here at school if you'd like to come and get one in person. Now, this day will be both for students who um, missed picture day and students who maybe were not satisfied for, with their original pictures. But again, we'll get more information out about how you schedule those, et cetera. The last opportunity for seniors will be in a couple weeks. We'll send out information next week. Um, and as we did in the summer and as we did last week, seniors who have not taken their pictures We'll have an opportunity on November 7th between 9 a.m. and 3 o'clock p.m. The information that will come out will be a link. And so it's solely up to parents and students to register themselves. And so each of the students who register will have a window of time in order to do their pictures. And then once they register, more information will come out from Victor O'Neill about what that looks like and their time that they've registered for. Quick reminder, the 22-23 edition of the newly named MASK, which is the Gainesville High School yearbook, will be on sale or is on sale now. If you go to yearbookforever.com, you can pay online through credit card, debit card, or PayPal. Um, we do accept cash and check. Um, it says room 2006, but right now our, um, our yearbook journalism advisor is out on leave. Um, and so if that is the case, then no students can actually come see me, Mr. Washington, or you can see my admin assistant, Ms. Fifely, uh, for in person. But the cost of those yearbooks will be $85. Um, that will go throughout the school year. Um, prior to the deadline for those orders, we will make an announcement and make that um, available on all of our electronic platforms, letting you know when that deadline approaches. Mr. Washington, may I just add one, one detail? We, we have to make an order for the total number of yearbooks that we uh, plan to buy as a school and obviously deliver to our families by about the end of January um, because of the way that the publishing uh, process occurs. So we're, we're doing the best we can to predict exactly how many yearbooks our families will want to buy, but it, it's an estimate based on interest up to um, the end of January. There is a chance that we'll sell out. Um, so we recommend, like with a lot of things, for our parents to, to purchase early um, so that we know we're going to have enough books in, in that initial run uh, to distribute come the end of the school year. Okay, so um, we do have some upcoming events that we wanna make sure everyone is aware of. 
Um, we do have some school holidays coming up, including next Monday is a school holiday, so you guys can stay home. Um, senior grad orders, um, we will have representatives from Jostens in our lunch on October 27th, and then another date, I believe, December or January, um, and we're going to drop the Jostens link in the chat for you all to have to order cap and gowns and all that fun stuff. Um, as I mentioned before, October 28th is the end of the first marking period, uh, which is a Friday, and then the following Monday, which is October 31st, is a teacher work day, so there will be no school for students. That week, we will also have our academic awards for the 21-22 school year. Um, emails were sent um, to those families uh, about last week, and a reminder will go out about that event. November 8th is also a teacher work day, no school for students, with a holiday for Veterans Day on November 11th. We have the, the holiday November 23rd through the 25th. Um, from the counseling um, department, I did want to make everyone aware that we are offering the ASVAB on December 2nd. The ASVAB is a career aptitude test. A student who just needs a little extra help in figuring out what would be a good career fit for them is encouraged to take the ASVAB. For, um, so any of our 11th and 12th graders are welcome to do so. There is a sign up in Naviance. Um, taking the ASVAB does not commit a student to joining the military. It may be a requirement for students who are interested in the military, but it is not taking the ASVAB does not mean that you are indicating that you want to join the military after high school. It is a very good career aptitude test. So if a kid's struggling, I'd highly recommend checking that out. And they are welcome to talk to their school counselor if they have more questions. And then we do have winter break, uh, kind of knocking on the door here, starting December 19th through January 3rd. And then we have up on here, there's a QR code, and I believe um, one of our APs is going to drop in the chat the webinar link. This is a survey about our webinar. If you all could just take a moment and complete that, we are trying to ensure that we're meeting the needs of our community um, with communication and ensuring that you have the information that you need um, to feel like you're a part of your child's education. So if you could just take a moment to complete that survey, we would truly appreciate it. Mr. Beach, do you have any parting words for us? Uh, yeah, just thank you again parents for being here please, please do take a minute to fill out the survey we're um we're going to be pushing out surveys after events such as these and other touch points during the year so uh, so we can get uh, feedback about how we can best meet the needs of our, our parents and students and also if you have any questions in the q a we're going to hang out for a couple of minutes just to answer any questions that come up uh, before we sign off for the for the evening and go to either a volleyball game or the spooktacular. If you're, if you're really quick parents, you'll be able to get back to the school for either a volleyball game, a playoff game, or a, or a concert in our auditorium. That being said, thanks for being here.